I never start out the show with the slide, but because it's so heavy, I've got to today. The plain truth is there are hobbyists and there are professionals. Of the professionals, nearly 87% are involved with the major somehow through distribution, label services, licensing deals, JV deals, standard recording deals, upstream deals, production deals, or 360 deals. And there are other side deals that you can put in play here. To be independent of them means you must be a company, like on a loan out deal, and you must be able to fulfill each operation, but you're still gonna be tied up into the deal with them. And you must be able to take on investment properly which is why a lot of people get tied up into bad deals. Now, the goal is to get out of the system to be totally independent, which is what the professionals are fighting for. However, this can either make you or break you, and it's very difficult and takes experience and training. The major labels shouldn't put artists in compromising positions forcefully or predatorially, but the other side of the coin is hardly lollipops and gumdrops either. With that being said, music money makers, let's hop right in. The Yeo 360 deal. Besides this being not such a favorable deal for artists anymore, this deal is still in high use. The 360 deal is an investment tool that is designed to lock the artist in from every angle the artist stands to make money in exchange for a share in profits and success. A major upside for the labels and a downside for the artist. The 360 deal covers sound recordings, music publishing, merchandise, fan clubs, touring, and more. Now, why would they invest in you with no show real profits? I told you we was going to get heavy. If the record company were to ask you for P&Ls, that's profits and loss statements, and balance sheets before getting a deal, the music industry would be in a different place. Pause. There's a video I did with Russ earlier this year or like at the end of last year. And I took a clip that he was from when he was on the Breakfast Club. I'll flash the video here. You should go back and watch that video because I talk about P&Ls. All right. The goal for a record label is to never show you how to build your very own multimedia company. It is designed to lock you into an investment with a strong insurance policy. So why aren't more artists building companies with partners rather than running to get signed every few minutes? Well, it's easy. Artists don't build businesses. Record labels know this as well as managers. Although this is slowly changing, it is with the likes of myself out here, what many artists don't understand until later when they are growing under the record label is that each part of their deal is a company in and of itself. Sound recordings equal the record label LLC, music publishing equals the publishing company LLC, merchandise and fan clubs equal merchandise LLC, the music rights equals the rights holding LLC, and touring equals the touring company LLC. But here's the trick. Because you don't need it all in the beginning, it's hard to understand when and how to build this. Plus, the amount of administration is mind-boggling to the inexperienced creative. This requires a logistical manager or a manager with a logistical mindset to pull off. A manager who is devoted to independence just as much as you are. Because there are some managers who are in it just to get the money. And they will go seek out a deal for anything if they can just to stay on as your manager and to keep you quiet so long as you have money in your pocket. That manager has to be on the same playing field as you and want independence just like you want it, okay? Now, record labels versus an investor. Let's get to it. Let's get heavier. A record label invests in your potential activity based on the divisions I mentioned just before, okay? The investor invests in you based on the valuation of your business multiplied by the multiple you want your business to be valued at. So, for example, I'm seeking $100,000 for a 10% equity stake in my company values the business and assets at $1 million. Formula, $100,000 times 10% equals a $1 million valuation. Investors want equity. Laborers want, labels want your labor. Now, if I own your labor, I own you, which equals indentured servitude, which equals a slave, which equals human capital, or nicely put, an employee, Okay. But you can't value your music if it's not set in a company with cash flow. That's where that let me pause for a second. That's where this comes from. An equity stake is in the LLC LLCs we were talking about. You don't just walk in and be like I'm an artist and I've done this and I'm seeking 
this for a hundred thousand dollars for a ten percent equity stake in my company. What equity of what? You have nothing. You don't have a company. I'm seeking a hundred thousand dollars for ten percent equity stake in my labor because that's what most artists are saying when they sign. I'm seeking a hundred thousand dollars for a ten percent equity stake stake in my company, which is labor. But when you build a company, it's going to be in the LLC and not you personally signing on the line with your social security number. And this ten percent equity, this ten percent equity stake is not going to happen with the record label. It's going to be more like eighty percent for a hundred k for an early terrible deal. Now you shouldn't be looking for a million dollars if you don't have the cash flow to back it up. This is the reason why record labels don't want to be a traditional investment bank. It's because it has to wait on proven ability to pay the money back over time and available collateral that they can receive if you don't. Labels don't want you to pay them back over time if they can help it. If the game is attention, hear me, then the time is ticking on the clock. So why wait for you to finish college when you can get in the league at 18 right now? They would much rather acquire the masters as a failure to pay, sell it back to you at an overpriced value, or keep kicking your royalties down the road essentially holding your intellectual property hostage, which allows them to survive in the first place. Now, it takes an artist a long time to get to this point. So why would a record label wait this long for you to structure a company to support yourself when they can come to you with a ready-made company to take care of everything? This costs you your freedom from the label. Okay, now, why couldn't the labels just help you build your company? It would be the equivalent of a company going to Shark Tank too early. The Sharks will say they need 50% or more of your company to help you build it because it's too early. It's too time consuming and labor intensive for the staff. Hence, why I said back here earlier that 10% would be more like 80%. And it would be that way anyway for where the labels are trying to take you. But is that where you're trying to go? See, the labels will never tell you where they're trying to take you. They'll say, we want to go here, here, here. And they won't say, well, we need this much to get you there. And we're going to put this much gas in the car and this much nitrous oxide in the car to blast you to that point as quick as possible. So it's going to take this amount of money to get you there. Because if we don't blast you there as fast as you can go, for us, it ain't worth the time. Maybe for you on your independent budget, it's cool. You can slow walk it. For us, we got to get you there because we have to meet our bottom line. And so we're going to need more money to handle this because guess what? What did I say? It's too time consuming and labor intensive for the staff to build your company for you. But not for me. For me, when I used to do it, it was. Okay? It, it, it became too much, too much sensitive information. But in the bottom right hand corner, I'll talk about it later. This was my solution to that, okay? Now, is this the revolution that won't be televised? Sort of. Only those who refuse to bow down to what a major company has to say about their work will revolt by making a decision not to bend, meaning not to sign. The second step is fighting the other battle of actually building their own independence. And it's bloody on both sides. It's bloody. These people over here that you see that are having a revolution on their own doesn't mean that they didn't fight to stay independent because there are vultures coming to look for you in your independence. And they're offering stuff like, oh, this is a deal you can't refuse. And at some point, many take it. That's why I say 87% won't remain independent. They'll sign. Now, why would a company sign me for a product that doesn't make money? Good question. Precisely. It's because your influence is priceless now. And eventually your influence will make your intellectual property valuable. Eventually it'll make it valuable, which is why we need the 360 in the first place to make money immediately while the back catalog is building its value. So when you're ready to buy out your masters, we can sell it to you at an exorbitant rate, which you can't afford because you don't have the cash flow for it. Something you would have had if you were independent. You get what I'm saying? But because they took it away and they took your labor with that and they gave you an advance, you don't have the means to buy it back at a rate of three to eight times the value of what it's worth when you're ready to buy it back. You see what I'm saying? So, Casey, this isn't for everybody, man. You're right. Everybody doesn't want to do this. And that's why the record companies exist. Some don't want true independence to escape the matrix because they don't know that it exists in the first place. Congratulations if you're watching my channel, you at least know it exists or you're trying to educate yourself. So if you're in this position right here and this position right here, I got something for you. If you're a songwriter, 
an artist, a producer, or a new record label exec or independent one, right, who wants to build your company from the ground up in 60 days or less without searching all over the internet for the how-tos and the articles spread out all over the place and all the information in one place, I got you covered. We're going to get it done in 60 days or less flat. Now, we got to build a radical foundation for you to survive on. And I got you covered with that. And then you got to learn how to play the game contractually, even though you won't be using the same contracts that they are. Or you may. Depends on how you want to play the game. You got to know how the game is already being played. And I got you covered in here with the contractual knowledge. And then also we're going to collect your independent record royalties and publishing royalties domestically and internationally, putting it right back into the company that you were building from the ground up 60 days or less. If you trip through it, you can always book a call with me and I'll help you back up so you can finish the course. You get what I'm saying? I want everybody to win. I was doing this one on one. It is time consuming, but not when you do it yourself. You can fly through it faster. All this stuff you see right here is conveniently located within the course. You can click the link below to get started today. But if you're trying to figure out more information about me and what's possibly in it, grab the free stuff below. 10 major steps to increase your record labels profits. A free split sheet is included with the download. Now, if you decide to go independent, you'll have the proof that you are the next best thing. The game will start to do business with you and you'll create the golden cash flow that you so desperately need to stay afloat. OK, if you seek the label, then this video went over your head. Possibly you became a prisoner of war and gave up or you had to call a truce to save yourself from becoming a casualty. In that case, you had to become a prisoner of war. You had no choice. They made an offer you can't, couldn't refuse and you wanted to survive. And that happens. That happens sometimes. Some people do not want to kill their baby. They want it to keep going. And so they decide to take the deal. I get it, which is why I said 87% of artists won't be independent, but we want to be here. We need more Russes and the Russells and Master P's and Tech Nines and, and currencies and all these people out here who are doing it independently, who are having their successes. We need more of those people to keep the independence afloat and powerful. All right, music money makers, this is where you want to be. So if you were struggling with how to build your independence, wondering why the record labels are the way they are, or just wanting to have a better vision of what true independence actually looks like, you now have the means and are armed to have a better vision, a better understanding, and better directions and navigation on what you need to do in this music game to get the results that you're looking for with your independence. Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, jump into the 60 day record label course, book a call there, all right? Download the free stuff right down below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.